I'm going to show you guys how to draw six different kinds of traditional flowers. A lot of people can get stuck with these, just showing the same kind of ones over and over again. and don't really know how to kind of modify and make them better. So I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different techniques on how to do that. So yeah, let's just jump straight into this, people. So let's jump straight into this. I'm going to be doing this on the iPad Pro in Procreate. But follow along with whatever you have. So if you've got paper, pens, pencils, markers, whatever you guys want, you can follow along with that. I'm not going to use anything particularly tricky. Uh, maybe just a little bit of symmetry, which shows both sides. But that's literally about the only advantage of the iPads when doing this. So yeah, let's jump into this. So this is Procreate. I've got a basic A4 bit of paper. I'm going to be using my technical pencil to begin with. That's on the sketching. Come stand with Procreate so you'll have this as well. And just create a few layers. I'm just going to go to the bottom one. Just rename this. Sketching. Real simple, just like that. So this is our basic bit of paper. So I'm going to do this bit kind of like sort of flash. I'm going to draw them all on there and just go through one at a time. I'm going to put them on the edge of the rough sort of uh, spacing. So I'm going to go like a rough sort of space just here. Circle. I'm going to have a nice kind of rose in this one. I'm going to come down here. This kind of sort of overly kind of shape. This nice kind of flower down here. Another circle one just here. I'm going to have like a fan shape one. So I'm going to draw this kind of, sort of semicircle shape just up here. With two lines just coming across like this. Just like a fan. So I just bring a line, a line, and then just create a kind of circular part just here. A little one just there. I'm going to have a basic little one I think just in here. Just a real simple little one. And then here I'm going to do one of my classic trademark kind of sort of like open kind of ones. So I was going to start with a circle just to begin with. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Real simple kind of plot out. And I'm just going to go one by one and show you how to do these. So I'm going to start off with, let's go for the one down here. Going to zoom in. So we've got this nice kind of oval shape. So what I'm going to do is just kind of sketch in a smaller oval shape just in the middle. But let's just keep going around and round and round so you kind of get it. I'm going to set another one just inside this, just like so. So you basically have two ovals, roughly like this. Then we're going to do is just divide the outside bit. So I'm just going to go one. Two, three, four, five. So roughly divide into like five little segments. You can do six, you can do four, you can do whatever you kind of want. I was five and five is a nice kind of sweet number. So I'm just going to start with five for this one to be in with. So we've got this nice kind of oval shape on the outside. So you can kind of reinforce this if you want. This is going to be our guide for getting the outside lines. So what I'm going to do now is going to whip this around. I'm just going to create this little dip on the inside bit here. So if you struggle with doing these kind of sort of shapes, what you can always do is like this little technique. So just do a circle on this side. A circle on that corner, and you're literally just going to go around the edge, and then just like a little dip, connect up to it, and go around the next one. Let's just do that for all of them to make it nice and easy, just like so. And then it's going to leap around, come left, leap around, come there, and leap around, and come there. So you get this instantly nice, uh, sort of like kind of, sort of uh, shape as well. And this is really ideal when you're doing flowers that are not necessarily, uh, when you have an area that isn't sort of circular. You can kind of add this to anything. It can be a nice kind of base, going around it. And just on the outside here, now it's going to have a few little pet leaves. So I'm going to go line. Going to bring it like this and curve in. This one going to have quite rounded. I'm going to make each one a little bit different. So you kind of got a whole bunch of techniques. All right, people, if you like this sort of stuff, make sure you go to tattoospace.com. I've got my sets on there, which have basically got the how-to traditional. It's got like 50 tutorials. Um, you've got my near traditional ones, got the 50 tutorials, all my other stuff. I've got some really cool sets on there. And if you use the code BROKEN25, you get 25% off people. Okay, so don't forget that. Don't like advertise myself, but yeah, if you want to support the channel, support what I do, feel free to go in there and check it out. Plus, you get to learn, so it's a win-win. So yeah, just bring a little line up, and then each one you're going to curve around like that. So you've got like a nice kind of circle sort of shape. So if you want to guide, just draw a circle in the middle, a line through it, then just curve around the outside edge. Real simple. So go circle, line through it, and then this will just curve around the edge. Just like so. So that's the rest of one. We're going to come back and do our little line work and a little kind of detail and bits. Uh, I'll just going to get a basic shape and kind of go from there. So that's our basic one for that. So now I'm going to go for this one in the middle. So this one I'm going to bring in a big circle. I'll just bring the circle on the inside, just like so. To show you how to do it again. So I'm going to basically draw a circle. So we go around the circle just here. Da -da 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 -da. Click. Press down on the finger. It's going to make a perfect circle. And you can just drag and then come out like so. So you've got a circle on the outside, just like so. 
you got one in here, so I'm going to create another little one just around here, just kind of lightly put it in here. And this one I'm going to divide into, let's say, six. So I'm also going to go line down the top. Line country that, and line country there. And I'll give you roughly sort of six ones, roughly around the same sort of size. My spare angle just a little bit, just just fly around it until we kind of get that nice even divide. And then we have that. I'm just going to reinforce these lines a little bit. So I'm not going to go quite to the edge as well. I'm going to go just a little gap, just here, just there, and there. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a circle on the inside part of these. So right in the middle, touching the outer circle. And this is going to be our guide for this one. The trick to change things up is always just changing kind of like the outside parts or the inside parts. It's a little key feature. You can change it quite easily. So now we have that. I was going to curve off, off this edge just like this. Curve into it. And when I'm going to get edge, go around the outside edge. And curve down. So you're getting this nice kind of sort of shape, just like so. So just curve, cut into it, then just bump over that circle. Curve out and join up your line. Try to get a symmetric, you know, like as symmetric as you can. You know, don't worry if it's not 100% perfect. You know, we are human, that's the whole idea. You know, like we're not machines producing perfectly matching things, but we do our best to try and get it as close as we can. Okay, I'm just sketching mine in, so mine are going to be like nowhere near perfect. And I'm just being very quick with each. And then I got two crazy detail this point. Yeah, just remember, we are still just sketching. You know, it's just the sketching part. It's not the detailing. So once you have that, you basically have this nice kind of shape. And the one we had down here, so sorry, spin this around like crazy. Had two looping parts. So you basically got this nice little line through the center bit. So we're going to change this one up. So we're at our secondary line now. What we're just going to do, I'm just going to go a few circles in here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Two, three and that's so yeah so it's another little pattern you can do on the outside i mean you can do just the basic circle if you want this one's a little pattern of circles around the outside just a little way of changing it uh, again i'm not going to do too much detail i'm going to sort of put a little few lines just in here but i will talk through more about the lines on the inside when we start penning it in so yeah that's the basic one just there now uh, this one i'm going to have the um the leaves a little bit different so they're going to be a little bit longer a bit more kind of pointy so you're going to make a much longer line. And I'm going to come back like this. See, so it's a much longer one. And then just the one next to it. And it has slightly shorter. Like so. You might remember that sort of style one from the um, the ship's tour we done last week. You see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of using the shapes. I'm kind of building up inside the gaps. So you can see, I've got a nice little gap in between this one. So I'm going to put this in here, here. When you knock a nice flashy, again, that's kind of spacing can be just really interesting and just makes it much more fun and appealing to look at. So just fly around with that, you know. And you can always add as many or as little petals as you, uh, sorry, leaves as you want. You just try that. You can do the entire outside just full of them and they still look cool, you know. So, uh, yeah, never be afraid to add some more leaves if you want to. So now I've got that done. I'm gonna, this one's going to be quite similar to this, but I'm not going to get this one just yet. So I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to put on a basic color rose. So a nice, simple, easy to do kind of sort of style, right? So in the circle, the inside of the circle, I'm just going to bring a line going through the circle. I'm just going to bring a nice little kind of shape to this, like that. So a nice kind of looping line just around the outside. Put a little line just flick off to the outside just there. Go back in. And don't worry about the sort of shape, you know, just kind of, as long as it's got some sort of nice curve, you know, that's kind of how it makes them different and more makes them fun. So just kind of play around with your curves. On the inside here, we're literally going to do a spiral. So I'm going to spin around in a circle like this. So I'm going to go around. And make a nice kind of loop in spiral. And then once we've got the spiral, I'm just going to bring a line just around the outside. I'm going to touch the top of that spiral and curve off onto this one. And I'm just going to add another little line that's going to curve up to a point. Curve around there. So you get this nice kind of petal just on the top. So this is going to be our inside part here. So we're going to add this in here. And then I'm going to divide the outside roughly into five. So let's go one, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three, four, 
five. And you watch them slightly different kind of sort of sizes. Don't worry about getting them 100% dead even. You know, a lot of times the charm of a rose is the fact that it's a little bit uneven that way. So now it's going to bring a slide out just here. I'm just going to go last wiggly line just comes around. And then the trick here, I'm going to bring this one up. And what one is this one's going to be more kind of pointy like this. So you see, it's going to come up at this kind of angle. You know, when I kind of point there. You know, you can skip them like this if you want, but I like doing this. This is what I like doing on my roses. A little wavy edge just there. Same on this side. Just a little wavy edge. And then these two top ones are more like this kind of one. Just like there. Just like there. And depending on the kind of angle you have, a lot of time I like to make this one a little bit bigger and a little bit wider. Because yeah, there's these ones kind of come underneath. It depends how traditional and how realistic you're going to want to make it. You know, just kind of play around with different kind of sizes. And once we're done, I'm just going to add a little curve line just in here. A little one just here. Like a nice little overturn. We make a, little, a nice little shadow on the inside part here. And then I'm going to add some petals. So, uh, sorry, I'll say petals, leaves. Those petals, these leaves. So it's a nice kind of V-shape just coming out like this. And then the outside I'm going to loop. Go back into it. Loop around. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just like so. And then once I go down, I add like a little kind of one just over here. Add the V-shape style one again. Just there. And then we're going to create that nice loop around again, we said. Let's go one, two, three, four. One, two, three. We'll put the detail in afterwards, but that's roughly the sort of shape. So when you imagine when a detail is more like this, so get that nice little loop there. And these will curve around like so. And then this side, curve around like this. Like so. So we zoom out. You kind of get this cool kind of effect just like this. A few little ones just down the bottom. Just to kind of fill out the space. So you can see, like, you're going to get this little kind of inside space there. It just makes it more appealing on the on the, uh, on the the flashes. Like, you can see, like, this gap in between is pretty much roughly the same sort of sizing kind of going around as, like, a rough sort of space. Now, not how you said exact. Don't worry about that. It's going to be exact. But you just want to fill up with those little spaces. So we've got that done. I'm going to come over here. And this is our nice little fun one. This one is going to be perfect for just any kind of little filler. So I'm just quickly just... Go like this first. Let's bugger me that one. There we go. So this is a really nice little gap filler. You can put this one in anywhere. It's just so simple to do. So you're literally going to go circle. And you're literally just going to put an X. Going through the middle of it. So it divides it into four. Get another little X. Going the other way. Just divides it into eight. But don't worry. We're not doing eight. We're just doing four. This is a little guide. And this is the trick. So we're going to go up. I'm going to curve around to that point and curve back. Almost like being a lot of heart kind of shapes. So you're basically just curving on that line in between each one. Little line just on the inside. Just check your size and make sure your size is all right. I'm going to increase the size in a couple of these. And once you kind of got a feeling roughly about even when you're sketching, then you kind of leave it. Oops. I'm just going to come in and raise it just to raise through this bit so it makes it more clear for you guys. So just like so. It's like a little kind of clover. You can kind of add it in anything. And you can just basically just do like little nice little kind of leaves just off the edge. Yeah, it can just be great for sort of like filling any kind of gaps. So you can see here, like the curve just kind of goes both side way, uh, like curve just in and around. So it's almost kind of like this bit on the end, but this kind of curves in which kind of get this kind of concave and convex kind of like, you know, kind of curve. This is just simple, you know, it's as straightforward as it gets. But that's a perfect little one you're going to find just filling any little gap. You can do multiple ones of those as well. They look really nice. You can just do like a nice bunch of those in a row and it looks really cool. So I'm going to come down to this one, which is uh, quite similar to this one. But you can see in this one, you've got a circle, which is quite small. So I'm going to make the circle much bigger than this uh, bigger than this one. So I'm going to go. Huh, huh. Start from there. And just create another little line just in there. And then this one, I'm just going to go canvas, drawing guide, edit drawing guide. 
I'm going to come down to the symmetry down here. And I'm going to extend the quadrant, I think. I'll get quite a few on here. Did uh, hear me? Or radio. Now I'm going to go radio, actually. So this one's a bit more sort of kind of mandala-ish. So basically gives you the option to keep adding more to it. So we're going to do. So we're going to have this. I'm going to divide it up into eight. So I'm going to start off with a basic kind of shape. So I'm going to start off with, say, curve like this. And then once you've got that, you kind of got part on the top. So I'm going to kind of create, just kind of loop on one like this. So the idea is you're making kind of layers. And each time you're going to add something new to it. And just don't give things quite simple. Don't go too kind of crazy of it. You know, you can kind of basically create like a little kind of bump. You know, like a little bit, you know, like the uh, kind of clover kind of leaf we just done. You can go like that. You can go semicircle. You can kind of go to a point. You can go V shapes. You know, but um, yeah, just try to keep it fairly simple. You can have as few many as you want. Uh, the inside part, you can kind of kind of be more kind of crazy as well if you want. So I like adding this simple kind of shape in there. It's always looks really cool. And then you're pretty much going to build from there. So once you have that, it's just going to redefine these little bits. And then you add little details just to kind of sort of find a little bit more. So inside these, I'm just going to create a secondary line just like this. And this one, I might create a little V shape just at the bottom. And this one, I might create a little, little line. So you can see how all these little individual details just add up and just make it so much more. You know, you mentioned that two seconds ago. Hey, look. So if we go back. And then we go back forward again. Just those few little lines, you can see just how massive difference that kind of makes. And this can be really good as a base. So if you have something above it, you can have like a design up here, and it's going to be a base, and you can have like your nice kind of look, uh, leaves coming off. Now, so this one that's going to the leaves, I'm going to turn off the drawing assist now. So you click on there, click off drawing assist, and that won't be symmetric. Real simple way of doing that. So this one, I'm going to, what I'm going to do for this one. So it's going to create this coming out. So I'm going to create a curve line coming up to a point. Curve out like this. And it's like a repeat and pattern, this one. So you can kind of go curve from the bottom and you leave this in like so. I normally have it for much bigger kind of stems. So I'm a little getting stuck in a corner just over here. So. But yeah, the idea is you kind of create a curved edge and then you kind of loop around it and add more. And you kind of repeat this going in any kind of line. So if you imagine if you had like this quite big. You can have this kind of curve around here with that kind of pattern repeat around it. It's a really nice way of doing it. And then we're going to come to the fan. So now I'm going to go draw assist again. This one I'm just going to go very simple. I'm just going to go uh, horror vertical. I'm going to drag this over here. It just makes it a bit easier than both sides at the same time. So I'm going to put this one roughly in the middle. I mean, you can just have this anyway and kind of move it where you want to afterwards. But the idea is just going to draw both sides at the same time. If it doesn't, it means you haven't got your drawing assist turned on. So click on this, and you have drawing assist. Click on that, and then voila. It will draw both sides just like that. Magic. So this one, I'm going to do like a very similar kind of version, uh, version as well. You can go as complex as you want with this. This one is quite similar to this, where it's like a nice bunch of layers. So I'm going to create my sort of circle to begin with. And then I'm going to divide up the fans. I'm going to go one, two, three. Nothing too crazy, so I'm basically just dividing into like four different kind of sections. And I made them all different kind of sizes just to kind of keep it more fun. So now I'm going to do over here, I'm going to bring this line out. I want to create a nice kind of boundary. So the boundary is basically going to be sort of like a kind of leafy kind of area. So I'm going to create this line coming up. I'm going to create one loop, two loop, three loop. Yeah, I like that. Then I might just create a little secondary one just kind of here. Just because why not? So it's like, just like that, it just kind of gives us a base to work off. Now everything is going to kind of basically kind of sit on the inside of this. So it just makes it really nice and easy to kind of work with. So this first line, I'm going to have very, very stern, just very simple like this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to have repeating lines just curving like so. So the idea is you want to basically kind of keep going with the shape of the fan. Now what you can do to make things easier, if you want, you can basically just keep drawing lines down like so. Um, sorry, get a nice and accurate rather. You basically just keep drawing from the same point, you know, like make a little point like here, and just keep drawing your lines from this point. And then you get nice, accurate divides. You know, so if you want to kind of that kind of divide to kind of guide to kind of get everything the right kind of sort of shape and size in, real simple way of doing it. So this first stage was a bunch of lines. 
The second stage, real simple, is just going to be a bunch of circles. Just like that. Nice and easy. To the point. This next one, I'm going to go up. Curve. And let me just double check this is going to fit. Yep. I wasn't counting how many spaces I had sometimes. So sometimes it doesn't work because the idea is this one's taking up about two sections. So obviously if you have an uneven number, you're going to get this weird sort of space in the middle. So just make sure if you are doing like a double space kind of like design that it fits and your basic number is even. So yeah, you basically have like you like say four squares, six squares, eight squares, 10 squares, not like uneven like five, seven. You know what I mean? Very simple. So yeah, it's, it's got a shape. So it's got this nice little dip in the middle. And then it curves like so. And then I'm just going to repeat that pattern just a little bit smaller on the inside. Just like that. Just like that. And we've got this outside part here. So what I'm going to do is going to bring in this line. And just on each little line, I'm going to create this little kind of mini kind of spike. Yeah, it's really simple. Like I said, just dividing it in, just each little area. Just think of a basic shape. Well, don't go complicate, complicate the shape like here. This is nothing but just a few lines, a few circles, and a little bit of a dip. You know, there's nothing complex about this. And on here, like just basic semicircle shapes. So I'm just like a nice, very simple curve. Just like so. And then you had this, like this, had some pretty nice kind of sort of fan effect. So I'm going to just do it again. I'm just going to create another sort of semicircle kind of shape, just so you get this nice edge. Like that. There you go, like a really nice kind of flower. And the good thing is this kind of fits the spaces. And when you kind of get the stems, I'm going to turn off the drawing assist again now. So I'm just going to turn it here. Um, I did initially have the stem here. I'm going to turn the stem a little bit the other way so it fits over to the side. So I'm going to have a curve here. And just curve down there. Just like so. And this one, of course, it's good at least coming from the stem. You can have your sort of like, you know, your petal, uh, your leaves coming off. But you're basically going to create these little kind of curves like this. So kind of curve off of the stem. To kind of create as the base. And once you have the base, you can create your petals coming off of it like so. And these ones are going to go a bit kind of sort of very traditional. So I was going to bring in this. I was going to get like this kind of zigzag effect. Just on the outside. And then I'll just have like some repeating lines coming up through the middles. So imagine here, I was going to go like this. I'm just going to go zigzag. Zigzag. And try and make sure you've got roughly around the same amount of zigzag lines as well. You know, I might have on here. I need to sort of double check. You know, if it's uneven lines, it just doesn't quite look as good, in my opinion. So there we have it. That's the basics for six really nice, easy flowers you can do. And these work for any kind of design. You can put these in here as a background filler in front of it, to the side. You know, you can have like, like a you have a basic kind of skull, put a flower on it, boom, nice design. You know, it's just, you can add it to absolutely anything. You know, flowers are one of the most versatile things in tattooing. So yeah, just draw whatever you want. Or if you just draw it on paper. You know, so I'm going to click on here now. I'm going to go to my very top layer. And I'm just going to put in line work. I'm going to go black and going to go inking. I'm going to use my modified studio pen. Um, it's basically the exact same as going onto calligraphy, monoline. Um, it's just, I've messed my, my life up a little bit in the sizing. So, yeah. So the idea is it's basically this kind of pen. So when you sort of see it, it's just going to draw an exact even line as if you're using a pen on paper. So if you use like a uni, like a uni pen or a uni pen or something like that, that's pretty much what it does. So it's just the same evenness the whole way around. So it's as close as you're going to get done on paper. I'm going to make this nice and bold line, just like so. And I'm going to turn my sketching opacity down just a touch. Just so our lines can sharpen a little bit easier. So now I'll go to the top, you can kind of see the difference between the black and the pen. So now we're just going to whip over our line work. If you draw over it and hold it, one advantage, another advantage of the iPad is basically you can kind of do that. And they're basically quite a perfect kind of shape. But you don't need it. Don't worry about it if it doesn't come out 100% perfect. You know, it's... Nothing wrong with that. It's just a quick and easy way of me showing you guys how to do. So I'm going to add it in here. Then I'm going to add a few little extra details just on the inside. Nothing too crazy. You know, a lot of time these kind of basic flowers, a lot of time keeping it simple is the better. And when I say simple, I don't necessarily mean that putting like, say, less in there. 
just all the details you do put in there don't overcomplicate it you don't like crazy kind of shapes you know it's simple and elegant is what you want so you got a nice kind of flower shape in there i'm going to bring my man down here so this one i'm going to have the line coming through the middle i might change that from one of the other sort of star ones because again you know like every little difference you make makes a massive difference to the overall design so if I didn't have that line through the center, so if I just said like this, and I was to say shade off from the bottom here, it look very different if I'd done this to sort of shade off from this side. You know, it's, there's every little line can make a massive difference. So just really think about each little line you put in there. You know, and when you kind of get that sort of thing in your head about patterns over like um like realism, it just opens up a whole new door for you. So yeah, just really kind of think of it from that kind of angle. So we've got a basic shape in here now. So, so, okay, so what do I want to do to modify it? So you can add, like, the basics. We can kind of go lines. So you can go one, two, three, four, five. You can make them big and small. I mean, that one's quite a small one. And another little thing you can do, with Red Dead, that's simple. It's just to add a circle. So I'm going to, say, bump this up. You can add, you know, just like a little dot. A little circle dot. At the end of it, if you want. We'll see where we're doing it. Um, you don't have to add it necessarily in the center. You could sort of go in the corners. One, two... Like so. Yeah, there's so many different things like that. Just those, you know, little dots, little lines make a massive, massive difference. So you just try getting a habit of kind of thinking about it in that kind of way. So I'm going to come onto this file now. So again, just going to whip it on lines here. You can also change the effect very much just using different kind of line weights as well. So I'm just going to pretty much use a bold line for all of this because I want a very sort of traditional and very high impact. It makes it a little bit less complicated, you think. But play around. Use thin lines, thick lines. Yeah, and if you want to learn more about line work as well, um, check out my creator courses on Tattoo Space. I have a whole big section on there about line weights and much, much more information on there. Um, it's really cool. It's a subscription-based thing, you know, but every month I have more content on there. So uh, definitely check out on there, and I have tons of stuff to come. But yeah, the idea with that is sort of try to show you more like uh, the technical kind of aspect of stuff, uh, especially if you're a tattooer. So if you're a tattooer and you're kind of, you know, like you sort of either start out your career or you're kind of in your career, I have basic stuff for like advanced, beginner, uh, and intermediate, so it kind of covers every sort of stage of your career, you know. And it's yeah, it's, it's, it's aimed at more sort of technical side and career side. So, if that's something you'll take serious, I definitely recommend heading over there and checking that out. So, we've got us on here. So, once we've got that done, I'm just going to bring in my circles. Again, you can hold it, click on it, you can basically do that. And the good thing is, when you sort of do this, so if you draw a circle. You click on hold it, you can basically resize it and the line kind of stays the same. But don't fuss too much about it. I'm not too fussed about it being 100% perfect. But it's fairly quick and easy to do this way. And if you used to turn transparency on, you could always like, whip for it even quicker. But just kind of get that muscle memory, get that flow. So it's this kind of motion. Once you're going to get it done, I'll look on the wrist. Just get familiar with it. This makes it really fun. So this one, again, I was going to make mine's cut up through the center. So with the little circles, which have made that edge different. And I'm adding a little line just through the center to make it a bit more kind of like detail on the outside. And then one thing you can do on the inside here, so I'm going to go like this. I'm going to add a circle. And just put it on the inside just there. No, nope, I'll put it on the wrong side, so I'm going to come up here. Sorry, so while I spin around the paper, I'd like it to be on the top corner. So when you zoom out, I want it out of there, not a bottom. The idea is going to be a little highlight shine that's going to come from this way. But again, I've got these kind of shapes. So remember, this one's got a little bit of like a curve to it. And these ones are much longer than the um, the last ones we've done. So again, try to think of that, you know, like, you know the, the length of your lines, and the, you know, the length of each kind of sort of shape you're doing. You know, how much you're stretching those parts out. You know, they make a big difference. So that's that one kind of line in there. So let's go for this one now. I'm going to show you how to quickly do this one. So this one, if we turn our symmetry again, if we go down to the radiant, uh, sort of radial rubber, just put that where it belonged in the middle. 
like so. And then turn on draw and assist. And then you can basically shoot through this one really quick. So this is, the, again, this is like I said earlier, you know, um, one of the big advantages of the iPad over other tools um, is the time-saving aspect. You know, you can do this just as good on paper, um, but it will just take you a little bit longer. To extend this. It's really cool, especially when you start zooming out, you can kind of see how it kind of builds up. So if you sort of go like this, it's really quite fun to see. And then we got semi-circle shapes. You see, just like that, real super quick, you had that done. You know, imagine if you're doing it one by one, so long, how long it takes, it really just speeds things up. So again, we're going to go on the outside by a hit, so I'm going to do within these ones we just done. Don't worry about going the same speed as me. I'm worried I'll go through this really quick. It's just, I want to give you guys as much information as I can in the time that I have. You know, but don't feel like you have to go the same speed as me. You know, this is on YouTube. You can pause, rewind this. Take your time. You know, it is not a race. Okay? So don't get in the habit of thinking of it as a race. So now we're going to come over to our rows. Nice fun one. Just click our light and go whip, whip. You know, kind of feel free with the lines. Don't kind of feel too restricted. Just keep everything nice and smooth, you know. You know, just don't kind of go doing, like, all this kind of stuff. You know, it kind of runs it. Just everything kind of nice and smooth. You know, that's what you want. And we find our spiral. I'm going to curve around the outside edge, just like so. Curve our edge around the outside, so we've got an extra sort of turnover. You can play as many or a few of those one you, you want in there. Um, this one's a very sort of simplified rose. But you can modify your rows to be as complicated as you want just by adding more and more parts to it. So take a little line stuff in the middle bit just there. You know, a little kind of turn area. I'm going to whip that around. And let the line kind of sort of direct you sometimes. Just like, um, I'm not going to kind of go in exactly over our line work. Just generally in a direction, in direction. I'm kind of letting my hand and my motion sort of dictate it. And you generally tend to get a better line that way. Yeah, nah, let me do those again. Some of those fantastic sort of features, like here, you know, like, um, I quite like sort of like separate certain aspects. So you've got these kind of ones here, then here. So it makes a nice little feature of this corner. And these ones kind of make nice little ridges here. So um, separating these aspects to really kind of sort of show them off sometimes can be fun. Sometimes it's nice like joining them. And sometimes it's nice keeping things separate that way. So we're going to go one, two, three. Why? Well, I'm trying to make these lines kind of cover roughly around the same sort of space. And so like, if you imagine the switch join up here. Just like so. Nothing too crazy. Bring in the B shape, bring in the curve, and like I said, try to let the hand motion kind of dictate where you go, just unless you kind of land in the wrong spot. There you go. So again, we just go one, two, three, one, two, just like that. I really like that. So now let's go over to our little cherry blossom. And we'll put in our little circle just in the middle. And what sometimes is quite handy, and if you just go like this, so just doing your little, your little lines to begin with on the edges, you can go like that. And then when you do it, you kind of get a nice kind of evenness to it. And you get a nice and even, but what you can do as well, and um, this made this actually a little bit di different as well, is a sense of overlapping. So, yeah, so we're going to go here. I'm going to follow the shape like this. And then each one afterwards, I'm going to go like this. So the idea is this one you can see is kind of overlapping now. Because this line is a straight, it's kind of coming from underneath. And we're just going to keep this method going. So that's another way you can change. You don't necessarily have to have the spacing in between the exact same. You can overlap. Just throw in a few little lines just in there. But I like to keep these ones really simple. I don't want to go too crazy with these at all. 
You know, because if I start doing these ones, they would generally be very small, so you don't want to go too crazy with them. And the idea is this is like a perfect little one you kind of fit in any kind of gap. You know, you're going to have a hard time finding a space where you can't put one of these. You know, they just kind of go everywhere. So that's our little tray blossom in there. And then we come over to our fan one. Okay, I'm actually just going because I've done the uh, drawing guide for this one. So yeah, just go drawing guide. Just drag this one over. Put it in position. So I'm not going to be putting, you know, like, um, it, if you're still doing it, it might be worth just doing it at the same time rather than to kind of reposition it. But once you reposition, reposition a few times, you kind of get the use to it. So just take a little bit of practice. So before I turn on the uh, drawing assist, I'm just going to do the circles just here. Like so. And now I'm going to turn on drawing assist. I'm going to start off with that border bit we've done. Just like so. Let's make the shapes nice and interesting. I can bring in that line just there. Bring our lines one, two, four. And then we're going to bring our circles. Just like so. We've got little circles in there. And then let's get our bigger curves in here now. So I'm going to go whoop. Whoop. Just like so. Now, inner line. I'll tell you what, I'm going to shrink this down to show you how it looks with a thinner line. Just as another option. I know I said I was keeping it that way, but I'll change my mind. Come up to the big one. Let's add another little V shapes. And then let's add our top curves. And then that bottom curve I might make thin. Or I might have a thin line just underneath it. No, I made that one thin. Which is the thin lines kind of a really different dynamic to the design. So it's worth me showing you guys. So I was going to turn off that drawing assist. I'm just going to come here. So I'm going to now whip in our stem. So let's get the basic foundation of it. Sometimes you're going to have these kind of lines extending all the way out if you want. I'm just going to have that go to about halfway. Uh, that's literally just personal preference. Four. Five. So we've got one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Let's go one, two, four. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to go down the small lines. I'm just going to go put these ones in here. One, two, three. Two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing too crazy. But now we have our flowers in here. Let's just erase one little one we have over here. Because I mean, this little dot I want to get rid of. And that's one thing I'm going to do, just thinking about it, because I forgot to do it earlier. I'm going to put it in a line, just follow the outside shape of these ones, which will just show you guys a different shading technique. That was a shading technique I tend to use all the time. So now we have that. We turn off our drawing guide. So now we have, voila, we have our line work. So now we have a line where we can start shading it in. So I'm going to go click on here, click on this, and I'm going to click on a reference. Do you want to believe it? I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to rename this shading. Real simple. And now I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to select the spray paint brush. It's my favorite one. I'm going to go media nozzle. It's what I tend to use for everything. 
before I do that load, I'm going to go back onto here because I missed a line. Very important because otherwise I can't do the same technique I want to show you guys. Always double check and make sure your lines are in there. And always make sure that they're nice and connecting as well. Because if they're connecting, it makes your shading a lot easier. Because we are going to be using a bit of a selection tool on here. So back to the spray paint, back to the medium nozzle. And the base is like this. So you get this nice kind of dirty outside edge. Just looks really, really nice. So what I'm going to do to begin with is just select all the areas that I want to be pure black. So I know I want this part and I'm going to click on it with the selection tool. And I'm going to drag to the site. So my selection threshold. So basically when you click and drag, it goes up and down. Drag to the right and make sure it's in the high 90s. Otherwise you're going to get a weird sort of like white edge, which is just really, really annoying. So I'm going to select the inside edge just there and there. And I think inside these ones. So just have a think about the areas that you want pure black. And we're just going to select all those just to begin with to make things easier. So I think that's all the areas I want pure black. All the areas are going to have some sort of form of shading. So now we've done that, we can literally just go up, make sure you are on your shading. And we're just going to whip over the top so all our pure black is in there. And it's always nice to kind of have that from the foundation, kind of, you know, because once that's in there, it just makes everything a bit more clearer so you can kind of where to work from. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to our selection threshold. I'm going to come here. Actually, you know, I'm going to select the other side. Actually, I'm going to select this side. Yeah, I'm going to make this such a pure black as well to begin with to show another sort of variation. Yeah. So you see, I've got on, the, on these kind of petals just on the outside, I have one side that is pure black. Then what I'm going to do is select the other side. I'm going to show a couple of variations. So you can either go from the bottom up, which I think I might do, which I quite like. You can go from the outside, like that, which looks pretty cool. Or you can kind of go from the top down, which... Doesn't tend to work really, in my opinion. I prefer the other ways. Uh, you know, it tends to look, look okay, but it's just you kind of get this weird highlight under here where you should have a shadow. It's, it bugs me. Um, but I'll tell you what, actually, because I'm going to do some of the others that, you know, similar that way. I'm going to go with this kind of effect so it looks a bit different. So I'm going to go down the outside edge, like so. And don't be afraid to go dark, you know, with your blacks. You know, like traditional is very much built on a lot of dark, heavy shading. So don't be afraid to use it. So one thing you can do on the inside here, I'm not going to do so much, but I am going to show you again. Is you can get your outside black. No, I'm going to do this, so I really like how it looks, actually. Yeah. So I've got a nice kind of fan. And you see here that like, the shading is very small, so that it breaks, you know, that's a very thin shade, so it's almost like instantaneous. So, I, you know, you can put a much bigger fade if you want, but sometimes a quick fade looks better. So imagine if you've done like a long fade, it kind of, you know, goes outwards, you know, but I prefer for this particular one, I'm going to go small to the point. It's very classic, very traditional. Now for this one, I'm going to select the outside edge, just in these gaps just here. And I'm just going to go up from the bottom with black. And I'm not going to go too far, just a little bit of bottom, because I do want some color in there. But it just basically separates and you get this nice effect around the edge of the flower. And it makes this stand out really nice, because you've got black in there, black in there. So now when you add a color, it's going to really pop. So again, we're going to come into here now and so decide if we want to get any pure black in these areas. So I'm thinking... Maybe just on this bit. I'm going to test and see. I'm too sure. Because it can be nice sometimes because you put a little bit of shadow, it basically makes everything kind of appear in like stages, so everything kind of sits up. But uh, yeah, I quite like that. I'm not going to get too crazy, but a little spike just in the inside of each one of them. Just a little grey shade just in that corner. You know, don't go too high. Just in that corner. Nice. Now I'm going to select these leaf bits just here. And these ones I'm going to go from the outside. So you see I'll shut it from the outside and then that inside part that way. So that's another variation you can do. Now there is going to be more sort of shade in here, but I'm, 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 slit. I'm leaving quite a bit of this one when I use the colour. So I want like these kind of golden edges as well. So I'm going to use like gold and a bit of like a dark brown for that. Now it doesn't always have to be black for the shades. So I'm going to select the stem here. I want some nice black coming from here, from the edges, and from that bottom. So we've got these now. Again, we can go and go from the bottom upwards if you want, like so. 
you can go from the bottom and top, another option. You can shrink it down, or just come up from the center. Like so. You can even come back and go around the outside edges. And as I said, it's always these little simple changes which make a massive difference. So you can see just how different every one of those effects feels on the final design. So for this one, I want to go around the outside edge. Now, I'm about doing that when the inside's dark. So we've got dark here and dark there. Now, if I had dark on both, this just disappears, which can work sometimes, but I don't want that in this particular, uh, this particular part. So I'll select inside this part just here. Sometimes if you've got a little gap here, it won't select that. So just come back in. And if you can't select it all, just select freehand and just select that little bit. So I basically just want the shadows come up a little bit just underneath here. Again, nothing too crazy. And then back to the automatic. And again, I'm going to show just a few little techniques you can do. So you could again just have it shading up for the bottom, which is always pretty much a golden solution. Or what you can do is we've selected and kind of go up and down the centers and you kind of get this like bumpy effect. Like that, which looks pretty cool. You can always do the opposite as well, not the opposite, but um, we select every other one to begin with. You can always put a shadow from one side. And then select the others, do that way. You know, it gives this nice kind of like directional kind of feel to it. So I've got a top bit done there. Let's go on to something else. So I think that's all the black I want in this kind of flower just over here. So I come on to here. So we have the black in that center. I don't want any black in these. I'm going to keep these very simple. So these ones are literally just going to kind of have. Black on these parts, just like that. I mean, what I might do is just a little bit of black on the center. I might do like a nice kind of fade just like that. Just so it makes it almost like a, kind of like a button in the middle. You know, I quite like that kind of feel to it. And lastly, let's go on to our rose. So I'm just going to select a leafy bit, it's just on the outside. Now one black coming up from the outside edge and just down the stem. So across the bottom and just up that center part just there for those. These ones, I'm going to select these one by one. And these ones are going to get a bit of an angle, so I'm going to curve like around. Like this. So again, it's just like another sort of method you can use, you know. It's, everything I'm sort of showing you is all these different kind of methods. Just like that. And then you have it inside the rose. So I'm going to go quite basic with these. Um, I'm going to show a few different variations again where I like, like I've been doing. So a bit of black just on the bottom can be all that's needed. You know, it's a really great way of doing it sometimes. You sometimes don't even need that, but it's really, really nice to have. What you can do on the outside edge, if you have little dips, you can put a little bit of black in the inside edges if you want. You know, you could also kind of, kind of go big. You know, that you don't often see it. Sometimes you can kind of have black come off the sides. But it really depends on the kind of style you're going and if you're having it in black and gray or in, in color. Like, so if you're going black and gray, then you kind of want to use the black to sort of better tell the sort of shades and kind of go more crazy, like, you know, stuff like that. But if you're not doing that and you're going color, then you don't particularly want that kind of feel in there. So I would save that kind of shade for the color. So for me, I'm going to go just in there. I'm going to shrink this down a bit. I'm going to put some black in here. Then I'm just going to get my razor. Just erase the outside edge. I mean, you can just select that part if you want and just do that part individually. But sometimes it's just a bit quicker, just going to go like that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically like an overturn. So, basically, it's, this bit kind of bumps up. So, I want to shadow behind there. This just makes another, a nice little feature of that part. So, again, it's going to go a little bit black from the bottom, just there and there. And what I'm going to do in the center part just here, I just want a little bit of black coming out from this angle. And again, I'm just going to raise the outside edge. 
Now you can know it comes with a sort of purple. I quite like the effect this comes in here. And I'm going to have this kind of red kind of fade off as it comes around here and get like a nice effect. But if you want this kind of area separated, you can put a little line just here or around here to separate this section if you want. But for me, I feel that it's the black and grey shading done on them. So now it's going to do some colour. So I'm going to come underneath this layer. And we're just going to put colour. I'm going to run it English way. In English, we put a U. Now, in America, you guys are C-O-L-O-R. But we put a U in there. I have no idea why. I don't know what difference it makes. But for some reason, we do. So we're going to go into colour now. So I'm going to start with a base here. I'm going to go red. Um, I'm going to quite a traditional few of these. So I'm going to select this. And because I've selected this underneath the shading, it will go underneath the shading. So the black will sit on top of it. So this one, I'm just going to go round and round, like so, and get a nice fade. Real simple. Nothing crazy, dead simple to do, and super effective. Then for this one, I'm going to go... Nah, not. You can do that if you want, but you know, I'm not going to go there. It's just easy. That's a bit of a cop out, in my opinion. So, well, not necessarily in tattooing, but just in my demonstrations, I kind of like take it away from what it should be. So, I'm not going to get the razor tool. And we're going to do this nice kind of edge. So, I'm going to go like a bit tricky sometimes. So, I'm going to go up a little bit bolder on that center part. And then on the edge. So you see you get like a nice kind of sort of like curve on the inside part. It gives a very kind of graphic kind of feel to it. I'll take a few tries sometimes. Even I sort of take a few times on this. Especially when I'm trying to get a bit quick with it. So you basically get this nice kind of outside kind of looping edge part. Which is a really nice way of doing it. And then what I'm going to do on here as well, just to kind of play around with it. Da, 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 da. Spray paint. If you wanted to, I mean, you could have a like that, which looks pretty cool. Then we kind of give it a sort of face, almost like sort of pink on the inside edge coming outwards, which I quite like. So it makes the inside kind of glow a little bit. Now I'm going to come onto these ones and I'm going to select. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go for my ink and pen again. So I'll basically use the bar, the monoline or something if you want. Uh, for this one, I'm going to swap. I'm basically going to go around the outside edge like this. Then, and let me just check. I've got a solid drawing assist on this, but the drawing assist will always generally stay where you had it before. I just can't remember where I had it. And I moved over to that, so. Yeah, let's just quickly move this back over here. Select like the radio again. Always select the same one you kind of use if you want to get the same results. And actually, if you select one of the other ones, it's going to start shedding in different areas and not in the areas that you kind of planned on doing it. And to do it again, remember, click on it and just click draw on assist, and that turns it on. Also, it turns it off. So now it's going to select. And just go around it like that. I'm going to leave that nice hard edge around the outside. Just that. Yeah, I'm going to make that inside a bit solid red, I think. Yeah, I like that. So that's all the red I'm going to put in that part. So we're going to come up here. I want the red to be nice and solid in this area. Make sure that I have that dry assist out. And anywhere else I want it to be red on that one. Down there. Spray paint, I want it red in that part. Or is that too much red? Yeah, that's too much red. So yeah, that's only red on that part there. I might have a bit more somewhere else, but um, actually, I will have a little bit of red. 
basically just on the outside edges just so I'm gonna have some yellow in there as well but yeah next we have this one so what I'm gonna do for this one I'm gonna select one by one I'm just gonna curve from the outside, outside edge so just where it kind of underlaps it's gonna shade from there let's just go around the circle and just leave a little highlight edge on the side Like I said, it's just a really nice, simple way of doing it. I'll turn off that joint assist now so we lose those annoying lines. And now I'm going to come to the rows. Then we'll start off with the center part of the rows. So you can kind of go from the outside edges like this if you want. You know, kind of click on the, the edges and work your way around. Now, which looks really nice, especially if you're doing a working, a bit of black in there as well. Like I said, going around the outside edge like that is one option. But the way I quite like doing it, which is just really nice, kind of classic, and that's just getting a red on the inside. And then like a nice highlight around the edge. Now you can do it like, you know, the hard edge if you want, around there, it looks pretty cool as well. Um, but I quite like this, because then when we sort of do the leaves from the outside, like here, when we start doing this, it separates it. You get this nice kind of highlight, which kind of separates the two areas. And like we said better, you know, maybe like the bottom bit, where the, um, where the black was before, you can also do this with the red. Which I think I might do for this. I quite like how that looks. Like that. So you get this nice kind of little highlight. Nothing too crazy. You go too crazy, you're going to start going to the Neo Dread. But um, I'm going to slip right from the bottom just here. Just flick it up from here. So just find some nice fun angles to kind of work with. So I'm going to work from the black. And if you have black, you generally want to work up from the black. No, it looks kind of weird to have black with no color and then color running outside. It just doesn't use work with it. Not that, not that it can't work. In my opinion, it's not a very easy thing to pull off. And then the inside part here, I'm just going to go red this side, red that side. And then I'm going to go red here. And it's going to fade off. And I'm just going to get my razor, shrink this down, hit that outside edge. And then scroll that out a bit. So that's where I want all the reds. So now we've got the reds, I'm going to start adding some other colors. So I'm going to start off with, I think, the greens. And the greens are pretty much going to go in the leafy areas around the outside. In most of them. So you can see I'm selecting pretty much all of these. The only ones I'm not selecting at the end of these leaves, at uh, the end of edge of these leaves, so when I'm different, and the inside parts are here, which are technically kind of leaf, but I don't want them to be leaf. Everything else I'm selecting. Now I'm going to ask for a nice kind of strong darkish kind of green. So I'll start with on this one. I'm just going to come up, and I'm leaving a white edge. I want to make sure there's a white edge at the end. Now if you go all the way to the end, it's just it's a bit too intense sometimes. You know the white edges can be really really good and in your favor when doing them quite a similar just turn it i'm going to go green leave a little bit of the edge just here just kind of green out of that black i'm going to have green pretty much kind of going over the black and again just leave like a white edge on the outside part just there This one I'm going to sort of just for the sake of just sort of shining in this one, I'm going to go like green to the edge. Because they all get very different effects and different kind of vibes and different kind of feels. So it's very important to kind of work or for me to show you all the kind of different kind of variations. So again, I'm just going to run the outside edge with a black. So I'm going to select these ones individually, I'm going to go over the edge just over here, which is a little bit annoying. So again, just going across there. I want a hint of green, but again, I don't want to lose that white line down the center. So I'm leaving a little highlight just down the center. So that's pretty much it for the green, really. The green is just pretty much one around the outside edge. And once we have that, so I'm going to go to yellow. So for yellow, I'm going to want to have that bit just there. Might have these bits in yellow. Just add a little bit more color 
to do the side part. And this one, I don't know how one of these inside edges are yellow. I think I might want these bits and then these outside edges are going to have yellow, but I'm also going to have a bit more color in those ones as well. Can we up here? Don't want yellow. Yellow through there. And yellow through these little top sections just up here, I think. This one. Mm, no, I'm not going to have that yellow in that one. Don't particularly need it. And yellow just there and there. So again, I'm just going to go on that. And I'm literally just going to whip all over the top, just so it's all over it. A nice and solid bit. And then we can come back and refine it. So I'm going to kind of come back and I'm going to use a nice kind of darkish. Well, not necessarily dark, just a nice intense kind of brown. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So where we had that red here, I was going to put it just over there. I will put a red on the edge again. I just accidentally um, went over the red and got rid of it. And then what I'm going to do just here, just on these edges, just on these corners of these top ones, just want to add a little hint of brown. Nothing too crazy. But just on that edge, just there. So just on the edges. Now it's a very typical kind of look in traditional kind of tattooing to kind of have that. And they're going to have like a little highlights in the center. So again, just a little bit on the bottom, just there and there. Uh, the top bits up here, I'm not going to have too much on the top bits. Actually, no, I'm just going to go quite light on those. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the brown. And then we're going to come in here with, I can make, use, use a really nice light yellow. Like a little kind of highlighting one. Oh, one sec. Did miss that one a little bit just there. My bad. So, yeah, now just selects a really nice uh, light yellow. And I'm just going to make a nice highlight. A bit lighter, I think. Almost white, just imagine just white with a tiniest hint of yellow. I'm just going to put a little strip just down the center of each one of these. And it's going to create this nice, almost like a little bend in it. Just like so. Now I want this to be quite intense on these top parts, so I want this to appear, appear, appear lighter. And I'm also going to come from the bottom of these spikes. So rather than them being dark from the bottom, they're going to be light for a change. And the same here, I want some light on the inside part coming outwards. I don't think I'm going to have any in the rows, I don't think. So yeah, I'm really liking how this goes. So now we've just got gaps in between, so it's just deciding what kind of color we want in these kind of gaps. So I'm going to select the pelvis just here. The outside parts of the leaves just there. These inner spaces just here. These little balls just in there. And then we have these outer petals just here. So these are the spaces that have left for colors. So I'm going to select a few here. So I'm going to go for orange to begin with. And one needs to be orange. I'm going to color down a nice solid orange just like so. Do I want orange in the other parts? No, don't think so. So now I'm going to come down. I'm going to go for... I'm a nice color of purpose. I'm going to just modify this a little bit. It's a nice color, like lilac -y kind of color. Yeah. This is kind of going to go up in these little gaps. I should quite like that being bold, actually. Yeah, let's go for a bold. I like that. So you got that just there. I'm going to reuse this color again because I like this color. But just very simple. I'm just going to have this coming behind here. Like so. And I'm going to select it, just one just there. Just over that. And the inside part just here, I'm thinking I might go for like a nice kind of like blue. It's like a nice soft kind of metal kind of blue. I'm just going to kind of go for the edges. I mean, you can do this kind of a bit blank if you want. You can do them yellow, but I just really like them in blue. And then lastly, I was going to select in here. So I'm going to go yellow for this bit, actually. Yeah, there we go. Got a bit of yellow in there. And not to say lastly, but lastly this time, I promise. Just for something a bit different. I'm going to select this. And then what I'm going to do, just show you such a little thing you can do. Just 
for a little highlight just on the same corner edge of each one of them and make some like little shiny balls. There we have it, people. That's how you draw one, two, three, four, five, six different flowers. In system ways, and much like a whole bunch of different techniques. You can, remember, you can kind of cross these techniques over, combine them. Okay, the dots, the lines, you can put into this. These kind of circle which you can kind of put anything else. These kind of overlaps, these kind of shading, these kind of petals, you can kind of alternate between these. So you can make countless, countless kind of flowers using these as a basis to kind of build off of and add to other bits. So don't sort of think one is basically the answer. It's a combination of all of them. You know, just try and think of that little aspects, the lines, and keep everything kind of simple. Remember, nice kind of curves, nice kind of sort of simple bends. Don't overcomplicate it. But yeah, I hope that's helped you people. Uh, make sure you check it out. Um, go on my Instagram as well. Got more stuff in there. And remember, if you want to see more stuff like this, go over to tattoospace.com. I have my sets on there, which has got tons more stuff. And I have tons more stuff coming all the time. Uh, my uh, creator, uh, uh, sorry, the creator courses has stuff every single month. Um, which is really good, especially if you're a tattooer, either like uh, starting out your career or in your career, want to help develop it or just starting out. I have stuff for absolutely everyone on there. So make sure you go check it out, people. It's really in depth. Um, there's hours of videos on there. So yeah, be sure to check it out, people. But for now, I'm the Broken Puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.